Hello everyone and welcome back to Whiskey Wednesday. This week, a whiskey I don't think we've ever reviewed on the channel. Joe may have done this a long time ago. But here we have the Spay Trilogia with this rather handsome little, almost watercolour drawing of the distillery on the front of it. What is the Trilogia? Well, first of all, before we talk about it, let me show you the bottle. This is not a litre bottle. It is a 70 centilitre bottle. They just like them particularly long at the Spay Distillery, also known as the Spay Side Distillery. Um, as you can see, very long thing, takes up the whole width of the camera. This is a non-chill filtered 46% whiskey, limited to 6,000 bottles. I have bottle 5,612, as you can see there. A little chunk taken out of this already, just to kind of see how it sits. We've had some beautiful weather in the last couple of weeks in Manchester, so uh, this has been a nice companion in all that. What is this thing? Trilogia. Trilogy. So it's three styles of whiskey put together. And I haven't had a lot of experience with the Spay Distillery. They've released a 15 and 18 year old single cask alongside this, which I've already picked up quite a few awards as well. Um, but this is a combination of the their three in-house stars of whiskey. One is called the Trutina, one is called the Tene, and one is called the Fumare. Terrible Latin and even worse Italian. I know Fumare means smoke. Um, what Trutuna and Tene mean is a little bit beyond me. But this whiskey is essentially a combination of bourbon cast matured distillate, both peated and unpeated, and tawny port cask matured distillate. That is then all put together in a final run of first fill tawny port, which gives you this rather wonderful pink colour. Between the long row red last week and this colour this week, they're quite similar, really. Uh, but yeah, 46%, no chill filtration, one would assume natural colour as well. Mm. But um, when this when it's, uh, landed, it kind of caught my attention. Uh, I'll be honest, the, the box caught my attention first. And for... how much is this thing? What did I pay for this? I think it was like 57... Yeah, like 58 pounds before delivery. So call it like 60, 64 ish, but on the shelf you should get it for below 60 pounds. I kind of thought to myself, why have I always ignored this distillery? And if any of you are brave enough to watch a terrible advert many, many, many years ago, about a decade or so ago, um, the distillery employed Michael Owen, who is a former English professional footballer, to do an advert for them. Um, he also is or was a shareholder in the distillery along with many other things. Um, he might be the worst actor you've ever seen. And it's a bit odd because he actually actively despises films. He doesn't really understand them. So he's one of the worst choices in the world. Luckily, they're long away from that now. And uh, this has kind of rocketed me into being quite interested in this distillery. But the nose on this thing is genuine summertime. If you've ever had like um, summer cups or like Pims as like a summery drink. Um, I'm filming this on July 1st, so Wimbledon's just kicked off. And this is almost like the smell of Wimbledon in a glass. You've got strawberry and lemon. You've got kind of thick clotted cream. Uh, it is a non-age statement whiskey, um, so I am unaware of the age on the product. Um, Spay fans might be able to tell us all below. And you do get this little whiff of peat smoke. It's just mingling around in the back, but up front are all these red fruit, milk chocolate, slightly coffee styles of, wh of whiskey, which is unusual for bourbon cast maturation and for port cast maturation. Um, the peated whiskies typically don't give you off that much of a, a coffee note, but there is a little bit of it in there. Yeah, just summertime personified. I was drinking this the other day in our garden. It's not much of a garden, um, but I had it neat and it really kind of warmed my palate up. And then I just made like a long drink out of it with um, some soda water and some ice and some mint. And it was one of the most delicious long drinks I've had in quite a long time. Just goes to show that even though it's limited to 6,000 bottles, you can be a little bit experimental of it because I still have a whole bottle left to enjoy. So please do experiment with your whiskies where you can. 
there are some incredible, what, like one of my favorite smells and, and tastes in the world is elderflower. And this does have some of those like Sajaman elderflower liqueur notes. And then you back that up with strawberry, lemon, cream, like pims, you know, it's just uh, quite essentially British, despite being a, a Scottish product. And then that little bit of smoke, it really unites these milk chocolate coffee notes. It's like a nice bridge between them. But anyway, let's taste it. Still delivers on those nice sweet tones. And then just at the end is that little uptick of smoke. I'm, I'm not a whiskey snob in any way. Like I kind of believe that if it, if it looks good and you like the sound of it, you should definitely go for it, especially if you have the expendable income to do so, which I'm lucky enough to have, especially when it comes to this relatively expensive hobby. I've got a very understanding partner who kind of lets me buy crazy things. But with this, as someone who'd never tr even tried anything from this distillery before, I'm quite impressed. Um, you know, you think about peated Speyside whiskies, my mind goes inst instantly to Ben Romack, um, but obviously Ben Riak are doing loads of different things, uh, Glen Allerkey with Mikkel Tor now have peated whiskey and a host of other places as well that peat their whiskey and not necessarily tell you about it. Um, Glen Glassow springs to mind, more of a highland, but still. This is fresh and vibrant and tasty and delicious, and it's, it has flavor and depth to it, but it's also effervescently light at the same time. Um, the, the palate is still full of everything you get on the nose, um, although it does go maybe a little bit more sugary in style. Those raspberries turn into like raspberries tossed in sugar. Uh, the cream becomes a little bit sweeter, almost like Chantilly cream. Um, and then the smoke just bridges it all and the finish is all like um, uh, coffee chocolate. Um, you just get this huge ray of flavour profile. And I'm not the biggest port fan either. Um, I can think of like two whiskies, three whiskies that I've ever owned in my life that have had port influences. One is Talisker Port Re, because I, I think value for money it's the best Talisker. Um, Cavalan, we picked with the company I worked for years ago, a Cavalan Solist port cask and it was the most blackberry whiskey I've ever tried and the old Glenmorangie Quinta Reuben from years ago and it was black packaging. I haven't really tried much of the port influenced stuff because when I try them it kind of, it, most of the time it doesn't work for me. It's the same with the rum cask single malt, there's like a, a handful or like I can count on one hand how many ones I've liked over the years, um, but I'm gonna have to add a fourth to this list because this is genuinely delicious and could be up there in contention for bargain of the year as well. Like I know it doesn't carry an age statement, but below 60 quid for bourbon, tawny port and peated malt influences vatted together with more tawny port at 46% with a limited run. Not that the limited run should add to the, the value bit. But if you've never tried this distillery before, I'd recommend going for this one, because it is very tasty. There's a really nice mingling, um, much like with the long row last week. There's a nice interplay on the second sip between new make spirit and cask influence. They're almost split. So the new make spirit is giving you this very light, fresh, um, almost comes across as grapefruit style of new make spirit. And then the poor influences and the bourbon influences and the peated element to the spirit too. The peat element's kind of running down the middle of my tongue and it is a gentle, soft smokiness. Um, a great way I would describe this is like 
culinary smokiness compared to medicinal smokiness. I should have done a little bit more research on the peat that they're using, but I would imagine it is Highland peat compared to Isla peat. That is an assumption, not a fact. Feel free to check me down below. And then the port influences are delicious. Like they, they must have picked some amazing port casks because I've had some rough ones in the past. Um, but this one is just very good. I'm honestly very impressed with this. And um, it, it isn't often that you get impressed by a distillery that's so young. I think this distillery only opened in like the 70s or the 80s. It is very, very new. Um, so it's very comparable with things like Deanston in terms of its creaminess and its approachableness, but they have a peated element to it as well. I like this. I, I think it's much more approachable um, in terms of this kind of colour and style than the long row that we had last week. Um, like I give this a solid 8 out of 10. I think it's really, really tasty. Um, if there is any left, because I was quickly Googling it before and a lot of, just, a lot of retailers have already sold out of this product. I think this is totally worth your time. If you haven't tried it before and I've got £60 spare to spend on a whiskey, like, you know, as long as it can fit in your cupboard, because like I say, it is a very tall bottle. You kind of hold it up in comparison there. Very tall and slender. It is totally worth your time and attention. The first sip of it was really sweet. It was all that kind of milk, chocolate, red fruit stuff, but the smoke has begun to develop in the little bit of that I've taken out of it. But yes, overall, this is a bit of a long video, I would give the Spey Trilogia, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, a solid 8 out of 10. I think it's good value for money, I think it's really tasty, and for someone who's not a massive fan of port casks, this is something which would make me want to explore port casks a lot more. Um, but yes, hopefully some of you agree, hopefully some of you have tried it, and I will see you all next week for something very experimental. I need to do some facts and figures before we uh, review, re record that video. But yes, I will see you all next week. Cheers.